Now that the subtitles are complete, we're going to be presented back with our main Stack Rips dialog box. But now on this time, you can actually see it has information filled out in it. In this case, it's going to be alien.avi. Now, it actually gets that from the directory name of where you pulled it from, and that's what it calls the file itself and just depends it with avi. Now, with this one, I'm actually doing an xvid exact file size because that's what I've chosen to do with this. And first pass uh, and second pass settings, they're all configured and all already complete. So they're already set for you. Now what we're going to need to do at this time is we're going to need to go to view, go to crop because we're actually going to want to look at the cropping. Uh, go ahead and close out that little dialog box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll around and look for a high visibility little uh, section here. Usually it's white light uh, or white background. And you can see here we've got the video. So we try to drag it and make sure that our auto crop actually works right. And you can see you can move it down a little bit. And uh, we want to make it to where it's just at the black. And do the same thing with the sides. So we're going to drag the right. And now we're going to drag the left hand side. And whenever you go back and look at the right, you can actually see there's a little bit of black right up at the top, but not very much at all. So I actually don't like the way that it cropped it because on the left hand side there's no black. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it full size left to right. Now on the top, let's go ahead and look, and that's perfectly fine as far as the top goes. Now the main thing to remember whenever you do this type of work is down at the bottom we have some numbers down here at 16 slash 16. This is what you want to have. You want to have the aspect ratio consistent between the two. Uh, you can make it odd. You can make it different uh, by simply moving and stretching the pictures. You can see the numbers change at the bottom. But you don't want to keep them anything other than 16 by 16 because if you do you're going to have some weird things happening whenever you try to make it full, full screen on your TV. Alrighty, another thing we want to look at is anamorphic uh, source. So this one actually auto selected the way it's supposed to. Every now and then they won't if they don't just come in and simply enable this feature. Uh, it works very well. Uh, next thing we need to look at is we need to see if this video is actually interlaced. Now, to do that, we just simply scroll from side to side, look at some of the action shots that are in here, see if we can figure out if any of these things are actually interlaced. Usually there's going to be some artifacts, some weird lines going through it if they are interlaced. Uh, here we can see the alien fighter. We keep on scrolling over. Usually the best place to actually find it is in the credits, so let's go ahead and go to the credits section. And you can see whenever the credits scroll up, if it's interlaced, you're actually going to have some lines through it. As you can see through this section here, there's no lines. Everything's looking really good, and uh, it looks really solid. So that means it has been de-interlaced. So let's go ahead and close this out. So that means we're good. But if we weren't, we do a right-click, and we go to Field De-Interlace. I've tried all the other ones here. Didn't really like them. I didn't find that they gave as good of a result as Field De-Interlace. So go ahead and enable it simply by left-clicking on it with the mouse. And then it's going to ask you to download it, of course, because we haven't used it yet. So click our little friend. It downloads it, does its little wonderful stuff, says it's done. Click OK, click Close, and now we have it there. But we don't need it for this one, so let's disable it. Now, video bitrate versus size. This is an important little fact. I've found that usually 900 kilobits per second on video bitrate is about the right size for something under 120 minutes of length. So um, if it's over 120 minutes, you want to get the video bitrate up a little bit higher. Uh, otherwise, you'll start getting some really bad artifacts. So uh, again, about 900 uh, kilobits per second is what you're looking for. You can go lower. Uh, you can go higher, uh, but usually around 900 is good. Now, with the experience that I've had with this length of a video, this type of a video, um, almost 700 kilobits per second is just fine whenever I'm looking at trying to keep it at roughly 700 megabyte uh, end file size. So now one thing you can do with it is if you want to increase the file size to get that bit rate up, you just come up here and to highlight and change it to an 8 or 9 and you can see the video bitrate on the, the right hand side actually is changing but once again I'm going to leave it at 700 for this video. Now down here we have our audio you can see that we've got the AC3 down here and uh, currently I have it set for an MP3 variable bitrate from 110 to 150 kilobits per second so this is going to be the audio encode 
for this particular video. And you can set it to all sorts of different stuff. You can come down here and add the existing AC3 audio if you don't want to alter it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it will actually work. You can do Vorbis, Aug Vorbis, but be very careful because the AVI does not actually like Vorbis uh, within it. Uh, so that can be a hassle. MP3, you've got variable bitrate, uh, you've got constant bitrate. Sorry, it's off the screen here, but you can look at it whenever you're inside the program itself. So you can actually set those. And of course, you got AAC, which you can do the same thing with, which is the Apple Advanced Audio Coding. Go ahead and click Next. Going to pop up another wonderful little job dialog box at Info Pane. Click Close. We can see now that our alien has been added to the job list. So at this point you can click start or we can actually click close and do some other work. So we're going to go ahead and click close, click source, and we're going to once again import a single and we're going to actually look and see if we had another DVD. Because if you had another DVD this is where you'd want to come into and actually add those files. They'd be shown here and you'd simply click OK and you go through the exact same process you've already gone through. And the nice thing about this is you can actually get all that stuff set up put inside the job queue here and whenever you're done for the night of uh, ripping all these vobs, putting them all going you just simply come up here and you click the start button whenever you're ready to go so you can have a whole bunch of them in there have a whole bunch of them ready and you click start and she's off and running and you set it and you let it go overnight and you don't have to worry about it it will just go through the queue like it's supposed to so anyway let's go ahead and click on start now so we want to go ahead and start our job so we click on start and it starts going through the process. Uh, this usually will take a little bit. Um, now we're going through the audio encode at the moment. And once the uh, audio encode has completed, we're going to go into another step. Now from here, this is our next step. This is going to be where we have to accept the virtual dub mod license. We click OK. And that's going to close that out. Now we're going to have another dialog box that's going to pop up on us. And this is just simply going to be some information from the creator. You can read it. Feel free to. Uh, down at the bottom, all we need to do, though, to get it running is click Start. And you're going to have a dialog box pop up. Don't worry about it. Just click OK. Just ignore that thing. It's definitely uh, nothing we need to worry about. And once you click OK, it will continue on through the process and will complete the video. Once the video is done, you're actually going to want to locate the AVI file. And uh, this is wherever you stuck it. Now, obviously, mine was on the root of C. So I'm going to go grab that AVI file, and I can uh, transport it and play with it and, and uh, watch it on my laptop on an airplane if I want to, or uh, take it to work and you know watch it on a... Uh, uh, computer screen the boss doesn't know about and uh, enjoy my video. So there you go ladies and gentlemen that's how you do the encode. Now a little tidbit of info you will want to keep the .sub and .idx file if you are interested in the subtitles. You also have the SRTs which are raw text files. Uh, the only interesting thing about those is they're not always accurate with what they did. They use an algorithm to try to pull the info out. I would not trust the SRT files. I would trust the IDX and sub files even though they are a little bit bigger. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my presentation of how to actually encode videos using DVD Shrink with Stack Rips to encode it into a XVID video with a variable bitrate MP3 as the audio. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments down at the bottom. Let me know if there's anything you need me to help you with, and I'll be happy to answer your questions.